You're listening to She's the Business Podcast. Have you also noticed that there's been a huge increase lately in direct selling? And what that means is emails from people you've never heard of before, (laughs) cold DMs, uh, maybe even cold calls. They're everywhere. They're in my Instagram, my LinkedIn inbox, my email inbox. Literally, I'm just getting bombarded every day by people trying to sell me something that I've never had any touch point with before. So I wanted to dedicate this episode today to talking about why this is, in my opinion, a really terrible strategy for your business that's actually doing you far more harm than good. So please stay tuned. I've got a great episode coming right up for you. Hi, I'm your host, Jessica Osborne. And in my 23 years of business and marketing, I've built many brands to become multi-billion dollar companies. And just in the last 10 years, I've built two online businesses of my own from my dining room table with two little babies running around at my feet. I've made it my mission to inspire you to get out of your own way and become the successful business owner who's living the lifestyle you really desire without all the hustle. This is She's the Business podcast made by women for women. This is your weekly dose of motivation and inspiration. So let's break down, first of all, what we mean by direct selling or cold selling. And this is where you've researched, so you've gone online, you've researched who it is that might be a great prospect for your business. You've found some information out about them, found a contact method, and then you've sent them a pitch, an email. Now, I'm also going to put into this bucket, if you've first reached out to connect on LinkedIn, but then the very next message that you send, you're saying, hey, I'd like to work together or I've got a, you know, would you like to work with me? This is what I do. So you've done one connection and then straight into a sell. Now that's not a relationship. So we're still going to call that cold selling. This is a very cold prospect. They don't know you. They, you've got no interaction apart from the very first time they hear of you, you're trying to sell them something. Now, it is a lot like the old days where we used to get a lot of door-to-door selling. You know, that used to be a real thing because companies were desperate to sell stuff and they thought, well, you know, if we knock on enough doors, eventually somebody's going to buy it. And essentially, we're doing the same thing now. We're just doing it electronically. We're doing it online via email, via DM, in the social media, pretty much anywhere that you can be contacted. You're sure to have somebody trying to pitch to you that they've got something that you that you want. Now, I know that some people may advocate for this. They might be telling you, and I've heard of coaches actually telling some of my clients before they came to work with me, they'd been told to do direct sales calls or emails to pitch to 20 people a day. And that's how they'd get clients. I was literally just horrified. I think my jaw almost dropped on the ground when I heard that because I thought, well, that is a way that you could get clients for sure. And I'm going to talk to you about why it's really time intensive in a moment. However, it is, it's a way that you can get clients, but is that really the smartest way? And for somebody to be advising you to go and do that, I really think that it's this time to sit back and examine, you know, what are the other options? Because that's not the only way to get clients. That is a way. Now, when you research online, what are the average conversion rates of cold cold outreach? So literally sending someone an email or a DM to sell to them. It is a 1% on average conversion rate. That means one out of 100 people that you contact are potentially likely to buy. One out of 100. Now, that is a lot of research. That is a lot of messages that you're doing and sending out manually. And the more highly tailored, customized, personalized that you make it, the more time consuming this is. To really personalize it, you know, you really got got to do your research on the person. And here is the clincher. You're assuming that they want what it is that you have and they have not put up their hand and said to you that they want it. So this is why the conversion rate is so low. And it's because you're dropping into their inbox or like literally knocking on their virtual door, walking into their living room, unannounced, uninvited, and straight up trying to sell them something. Now, how icky does that feel? 
you're completely an uninvited guest in their space, in their inbox, in their DMs. And you're telling them that they need something that you're offering when they haven't actually said that they want it. So this is really, we're getting now to why this is so damaging for your business. Two ways that it's damaging. One is the incredible amount of time that you need to spend to do this tactic. If you're going to follow it and you get 1% conversion, you need to send research and send 100 emails or DMs to prospects. You can try to reduce that time by being templated, but the more templated your approach is, the more people see it as a template. And we're really savvy about it these days. People don't like it. We can tell when someone is just spamming us because, hey, we're used to spam. We get it all the time, right? We get it in our emails. We get it in our letterboxes. We know what spam looks like. We know when it's not tailored to us. And, and really the massive clue is they're often telling you you need something that you don't actually need or want. How many times I get somebody pitching to me, telling me that they'll help me get clients. And they clearly haven't even looked at my business, my website, anything for, for 10 seconds, because if they did, they would see that the number one headline says, I help you get clients. <laughs> They're literally pitching to me what my own business does. Now that to me is the epitome of stupidity. I, I couldn't imagine do, you know, if you're going to spend the time sending somebody a cold email, at least take a second to have a look at the front page of their website and see what it is that they do. But no, I get these emails where they've inserted my name into a templated email that they've, they've had written and they're just spamming, sending it out. Now, of course, they're spending less time on doing that, but your chance of success is probably well below the average of the 1%. You're probably at a 0.5%. You might have to send 200, 300 emails to find somebody who eventually bites. So I really, really highly recommend taking a look at this and thinking really long and hard about whether this is actually an effective strategy. The time it takes, number one, it could be far better spent doing something else that actually creates inbound leads, like people to find you and, and come to you who actually want what it is that you're selling, right? So much better than reaching out to somebody cold. The other thing is, you're damaging your brand. Any kind of brand that you have or are building, any presence, you're instantly damaging it to the people who you're spamming. Because now in their eyes, you're somebody who doesn't take the time to understand them, isn't listening, not paying attention. You just you're all in it for you. You're out there just literally spamming them with your sales message. And that's not a great way to start a relationship. So let's think about, you know, what are the other ways that you can get clients? Because cold outreach is one. There's really three overall, and they can each be broken down into subcategories. But one is that cold outreach, which really ineffective, highly time intensive and something, you know, I had, didn't mention before, but I'll say now that the, one of the main problems is that not only takes you that amount of time, but it's time that's not leveraged because you have to repeat it again and again and again. That time that you invest isn't something that then can be utilized over and over again because it's just for that one potential prospect. You have to do the research on them, send the email to them. That doesn't help you with the next 100 that you need to send. So it's unleveraged time. It's very intensive. And, and, you know, unless you're sitting there with bucket loads of time on your hands and nothing else to do, which I really can't imagine anybody who's listening to this podcast is sitting there thinking that they've got far too much time on their hands and they're looking for ways to fill it. But then this really isn't the strategy for you. So what are the other two ways? You're probably wondering, right? So the second way would be referrals referrals from other people. Now, referrals, they have, in my view, there's a good and a bad side that comes along with it. What's great about them is there's literally almost no effort on your part. You get a referral, you probably need to respond and, and provide that, you, you know, straight into the sale, really, because they've been referred to you, they reach out and say, how can we work together? So there's a lot less time spent on your part However, the downside to referrals is the quality of them is usually a lot less than the third method that I'll talk about in a moment. Um, and you also have no control over it. 
So when other people are sending you referrals, you know, you're really relying on them to send those people to you, which means who knows when they're going to send the next one. You might get a week where you get a whole stack and then the next week you have none and you don't know what's going to happen the next week. So what tends to happen when you're relying on referrals, when it's that your only source of clients or leads is that you tend to say yes to, to people who inquire who are not the right fit for you because you're you know, pretty much in a place where you're thinking, I better say yes, because I don't know when the next one is coming. You're in a place where a view on, you know, it's really what we'd call scarcity mindset and a bit of fear, which is completely valid because yes, you don't know where the next one's coming from. You don't know who's going to be next and if you're going to get another referral or not. Now you can improve this. You can improve your referral-based business by being really clear about your niche and communicating that really well. So the more clear your network and your clients, your friends, your colleagues, and other people who know you, the more clear they are about specifically what it is that you do and who you work with, the better quality referrals you'll get. You're still going to ideally want to look at who they are and cherry pick the right ones out of it. So you can build that business by building your network. However, where I think it's less smart is that you, you know, what happens when there are none? What happens when there, when there's a drought, <laughs> when there's no referrals that month, what have you got to fall back on? And when you don't have your own inbound lead generation set up with your own inbound marketing happening so that people are coming to you, then you're really left high and dry waiting for that next referral. That brings me to the third way you get clients. The third way is what I call attraction-based marketing. This is where you create presence online for your business, for your brand, for yourself that helps attract in the people who you want to work with. So this includes many different activities that you can choose, which ones would be right for you and what you want to do to create that presence. But we're looking at you becoming somebody who's a respected authority in your space, somebody who's seen with credibility, somebody who you know has a voice. And when people find you, they can self-select whether they're the right fit for you or not. So what happens then is you get the right fit people coming into your inbox, which is incredible. The best thing about this is the time that you spend on doing that on doing any activities that you're doing are leveraged activities because you spend the time on one activity, but it helps you potentially reach a whole lot of prospects at once and will continue to grow over time. A lot of the content that you put out or things that you work on is not something that's here and gone in just a moment. It can stick around just like this podcast that you're listening to. So there's some types of content that you put out there that stays around for a long time. It carries on generating more awareness, more exposure, more people who can engage with it and understand whether you know, you're the right fit for them or they've got some interest so they can go and look further. It brings people to you. I like to think about it like there's a masculine and a feminine energy that goes along with marketing. Now, doing cold outreach, sales, um, you know, where you're finding, trying to find clients, even if you're scrolling Facebook groups, looking for leads and then reaching out and saying, hey, I'd like to work with you. You know, that's pretty much the same thing. That is a masculine energy. It's got a lot of energy that you need to invest in it and exertion, pushing, pushing, pushing to get something to happen. Whereas when you do attraction-based marketing, it's actually the opposite, like yin and yang. You're the light, you're the energy source, and you're attracting your people into you. You're, you're the one there. You've done some groundwork. You've set a foundation. You've put yourself out there, and that shining light is attracting your people into you. It's such a totally different feel to it. One of them is very salesy and hard-nosed, and then the other one is a beautiful connection. You're making a connection with that person. They're deciding, I want to reach out to this person. I want to learn more from them. I want to you know, find out just that last bit about how do I work with them? They probably already want to work with you. And it's just that final, how do I actually work with you? Tell me please how it is. So they're dropping into your inbox already decided that you're a great fit for them. 
and they just have a couple of little questions that they probably need to answer. So can you see the difference? Now, when you think about it, you think, well, it's a no brainer. Why would anyone waste their time doing all of these cold outreach emails if they understood about attraction based marketing? And yeah, to be honest, in my opinion, 100% you're right. Why would you spend that time? It is a crowded online space. And that's I really feel for everybody, you know, we're all in it here together. There's more and more people coming online with businesses every day, every week, there's new people popping up. It's becoming more and more crowded. And I can completely understand that it might be seem like the best option or the fastest, easiest way to get clients is to like reach out and, and find them. And yeah, if you're starting out, you don't have a presence yet and you need a client to bring in some income. Absolutely. You might think that might be a good thing to do at, at the very moment that you are at right now, where you can put in a little bit of energy and get a client that, that brings in a bit of revenue the more effort you put into that prospecting and, and building a relationship before you even start any sales conversation, the more likelihood of success you'll have, much higher conversion rate. So I just say with that caveat, you know, if you are going to do it, think about it as you need to have a few dates before you ask them to marry you. Like, don't just dive straight in there with the hard question as soon as they open the door. You, you want to build a relationship first in some sort of presence. So it can be something, and I would use it very sparingly and only at the beginning, because every bit of time that you spend on that, like I said before, it's not leveraged time. You, it's not adding anything to you. It's not helping you grow. Whereas the time that you might spend on building a profile, for example, writing a, a piece that's thought leadership, even creating some content that you can share on Instagram or on YouTube, YouTube far better because it stays around for so much longer or even TikTok, you know, anything that you're putting out there that can help you to build a profile, that is far more leveraged time because so many more people are going to see it. You're not just creating something for one person to see. So you want to be thinking really carefully about, well, what is the best use of your time and where should you go from here? Now, the, the benefit of getting a client up front um, when you're starting out and you don't have that presence yet, yes, try the, the pitching just so you think, well, it's actually so I can get a client on board. I can get a testimonial. I can get some social proof and credibility that will help my profile. So the investment you're putting in is not just to get the client. It's actually for the testimonial. Once you have those, you know, really your focus should be far more on building that profile so that you you can be working, you can be serving clients, you can be doing all of these other things and they're coming into you. Attraction-based marketing is by far much smarter and much easier way to grow your business because, you know, you really don't need to be spending hardly as much time on it as you would on cold prospecting. So yes, that's my message for you today. Um, I hope it's been useful and helpful. I um, clearly have a strong opinion on this. I'd be interested to hear your opinions and, and what works for you. Um, and as always, reach out to me with any feedback, questions, comments. I love to hear from my listeners. Thank you for tuning in today. Have you ever considered just how much easier your business would feel if you had committed, you know, ready to work with you, prospects dropping into your inbox automatically every month without you having to go looking for them? Well, that could be entirely possible. Imagine no ads, no sleazy cold outreach and DMs, no hours and hours spent scrolling social media looking for leads and definitely not sitting around waiting for the odd referral to drop into your lap. This is about your marketing strategy that turns you into a magnet for committed high value clients who are exactly the right fit to work with you and actually ready to work with you as well. So please come and join me for my very short but jam-packed full of excitement live training called the Magnetic Formula. This is the only time I'm running this training this year. Come and join me live. It's happening on September the 7th. Mark your diaries. Come and join me and I'm going to share with you the proven formula that I use and that I teach my clients as well through my programs on how to become the magnet. So you're drawing in those right people to you and you don't have to spend your precious time out there hunting down sales. 
I know we all have time that we'd much rather be spending with our families, for ourselves, doing something else. And that's exactly what being in business is all about. It's about creating the life that you really want. So come and let me show you how. Head to jessicaosborne.com slash magnetic or drop into the show notes. I put the link there for you. Come and get yourself on the list. Register before all the space is gone. Seats for this training are limited. It's online, yes, but it has got a limited capacity. So make sure you get your name on the list today so that you don't miss out. And I'll see you there on September the 7th.